previously on Science for All. So my question for you for the next time is not why is it that Pluto is no longer a planet? That's an easy question. What I want you to think about is why is it that Pluto ever was a planet and why is it that so many textbooks just got it all wrong? And now the answer. So Pluto is no longer a planet. Get over it. Now before getting to the interesting question of why it is that it ever was an actual planet, let me tell you quickly why it is that it is no longer a planet. So the short answer is that the International Astronomical Union no longer sees Pluto as a planet. Wait, this union gets to decide what truth is? Well, it's important to see that this is not a problem with truth. This is a problem of semantic, of the definition of the word planet. The real question that we're asking here is, are we allowed or should we use the word planet to talk about Pluto? Now to understand why the International Astronomical Union decided to demote Pluto from the status of a planet, we have to talk about this guy, Michael Brown. In 2005, Michael Brown discovered a new planet, the 10th planet of the solar system, which he called Eris. The International Astronomical Union refused to give Eris the status of planet and that's because if you make Eris a planet then you'd have to accept that many other objects which are very like Eris and Pluto are also planets but then you'd end up with thousands of planets and nobody wants to learn about the thousand planets of the solar system so the International Astronomical Union said no Eris is not a planet and as you guessed, Michael Brown was not happy. Come on, you gotta be kidding me! I mean, it's bigger than the Pluto, and Pluto is a planet, so Eris must be a planet. Come on, it's bigger, it has everything better than Pluto. Why Pluto is a planet and Eris is not a planet? If you tell me that Eris is not a planet, then I'm sorry, but Pluto must not be a planet. Arguing against the planetary status of Pluto was quite an easy thing to do. This is the moon, this is... Pluto. It has a weird orbit. It's really not alone where it is. It's like its orbit goes closer to Neptune at some points and then much, much, much further. Pluto is smaller than our own moon. Its orbit is not in the same plane as all the other planets. Pluto is more like a comet than a planet. So clearly, Pluto is not a planet. The really interesting question is, why is it that it ever was a planet. To understand the miscategorization of Pluto, I need to go back in history. Before the 18th century, it was believed that there were exactly six planets. Mercury, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So when William Herschel observed a new planet up there in the sky, he obviously thought it was a star, not a planet. After all, from where we are, all we can see is a bright dot in the sky. But after closer inspection, scientists realized that this bright dot was actually moving as opposed to the background. And that's what planets do, not stars. So they had named it Uranus. Uranus? Uranus? And now we're getting to the very fun part. Uranus? Theoreticians started to study the motion of this distant planet. And they figured out that it's not moving exactly as you'd expect. Its trajectory gets slightly perturbed as though there was some other astronomical object that were pulling it away from its natural trajectory. In particular, through clever calculations, the French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier managed to point telescopes to the right direction. And guess what? They looked up there at that time and what they saw was the eighth planet of the solar system. How awesome is that? Theoreticians started to study the motion of this new planet, which they called Neptune, and they realized that its trajectory was also perturbed in a very similar way, as though one more planet, the ninth planet of the solar system, was affecting its trajectory. So they looked, they looked, and they looked out there in the sky, and they saw something moving. Well, it wasn't that clear, it was pretty dim, and it was also not moving very much. But since history was kind of repeating itself right here, well, everyone trusted the result. Both the theoreticians and the experimenters started to have trust in the fact that this slightly moving object up there was planet X, 
the ninth planet of the solar system, which is now dubbed Pluto. But as years went by, the estimation of the size of Pluto somehow just decreased. Like people realized more and more that it was not as big as they thought it would be. And it's only in the last decades that we've realized that this Kuiper belt was really out there, that there were thousands and thousands, and if not more, of Pluto-like objects out there that perturb the motion of Neptune. So to answer the question, why is it that Pluto ever was a planet? Well, it's because of history of the way we discovered Neptune, and that following history, theoreticians have predicted that it was a ninth planet, and that experimentally saw something moving in the sky. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to talk about increases and decreases. Namely, imagine that you are at a store and that um, all prices go up by 10%. But then you find this one piece of clothes that you want, say a shirt, and it's 10% off. Does that mean that it is at the same price as it used to be? In other words, if you have a 10% increase followed by a 10% decrease, do you get back where you were? And what if you had a 10% increase followed by a 5% decrease? Do you have a 5% increase overall? Now I don't want you to just simply solve the problem, I want you to really understand, to which really extent the, the answer, the intuitive answer is wrong or right, and to which extent you can sort of correct it and sort of grasp the whole intuition of what's going on. Here. And as you see, it gets to deep, very important pieces of mathematics that are fundamental to all of science. So, increase followed by decrease, this is what I want you to think about for next time. Can you have a good understanding of that? That's what I want to know. You can uh, send me your answers on Facebook or Twitter uh, and Google Plus also. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to this channel so as not to miss the future videos. And I guess I'll see you next time.